So 2019 has come to an end, and we've begun 2020 and a new decade, and I feel important to my growth as a person and as a decent member of society to reflect on the past few years. Suffice to say, a lot has changed us, both as individuals and as a culture. Some of these things were good, some of them were bad, and others were merely exploited for money. One of the most notable changes being the <clears throat> rebirth of superhero content. Now, this isn't to say that superheroes weren't a thing for almost a century now. From Mighty Batman Comics, all new legends blaze with all three. But it was only within the past decade that we decided to let things get a bit out of hand. Just a little. Now things seemed peaceful at first, but it only took a few minute clip to shape pop culture as we know it. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. The rest is history. And with these words, an age-old rivalry has once again resurfaced after a relative dormancy. Marvel versus DC. For decades, the Marvel versus DC feud was something relegated to comic book geeks, fans, and uh aficionados. But for the first time, the debate of Marvel versus DC had been brought to mainstream audiences and households alike, thus turning what felt like a niche subculture for some into a global phenomenon that has raked in billions from across the various forms of media. It's safe to say that under Disney's control, Marvel started a cultural phenomenon that would dominate the next decade whether we liked it or not. Over the 10 year gap, there has been 40 movies, 28 TV shows from various studios, networks, and production companies based on these characters. Marvel has had a huge impact in popular culture and its quest for global domination. On the flip side, we have the once dominant DC industry begin to lose its spot on the entertainment totem pole after decades of complacency. Kicked aside, they would become the stuff of jokes and would be stuck playing a game of catch up with the MCU over the next 10 years. And thus, these two rival companies, who maintained a somewhat healthy respect for each other, Fuck Marvel! were launched into a new cultural war that would span across the various forms of the media realm. A war fueled by us, the fans. Movies, TV shows, video games, and cartoons would be produced in mass to feed the hunger of the fan bases. So, as we wind down the decade, I have to ask, is there a winner to this Marvel versus DC? Debate. Is one truly superior to the other? To do this, I'm going to look at the highlights from the various forms of superhero content that have been released between the 10 year gap from the end of 2009 and the arrival of 2020. Those various forms being any cartoons, live action TV shows, movies, video games, and comics of importance or significance that were launched during this time. And just to note, when I say importance or significance, this can be either something good or something bad. While I have an understanding and basic knowledge of some of this content, I don't have experience with all of it. As a result, I am going to be using various review websites as references, but interjecting my own opinions into the mix while being as close to fair in respects to both franchises. I will address any of the more uh, interesting controversies that I feel are worth talking about, and believe me, there are plenty of them. But I'll also admit any of those clickbait topics that have popped up here and there because... We don't dignify absurdities with coverage. I know a lot of websites have already posted content similar to what I'm doing here. Articles that describe five things Marvel does better, five things DC does better, ultimately concluding in some sort of stalemate where one side isn't necessarily better than the other in the long run. That they're both great and there's nothing wrong with liking both of them. And if the articles won't say as much, you can bet your bottom dollar it'll be mentioned a few times in the comment sections. That when we're all having fun, we're all winners. Even I'm a winner. Are you kidding me? No, rest assured, this is not one of those videos. Nope, no cop outs. One of these must be the victor. The world demands it. Now, before I start, I'd like to set the stage on how I view these two companies and how I imagine they handle their content. Let's start with Marvel. Ugh. How can I put this? Seeing how for more than half the decade, the MCU wasn't as complete as it is now, I feel it necessary to separate Marvel 
and to the various franchises. The MCU, or Marvel Cinematic Universe for the Uninitiated, the X-Men, <laughs> Fantastic Four, <clears throat> allergies, and, uh, friends. The MCU had a plan from day one, and it was going to accomplish it with or without the X-Men or friends. Whether Kevin Feige planned on the MCU to be as big as it is now, to have lasted as long as it has, or if they did have to wing it a few times is ultimately irrelevant for the most part. But point is, they were, and remain, very consistent to what they set out to do for its shows and its movies. DC, they didn't have a plan for things moving forward, trying desperately to play catch up with Marvel. And as a result, they just seemed to start spitballing ideas, in hopes of finding something that stuck. Naturally, not the best business plan, especially when a horde of angry fanboys are demanding that you do better, and how much you suck as a result. Though pleasing some people. And as a result of this, a lot of DC content is all over the place in terms of quality, aesthetics, design, and results. And while many people can write this off as a failure and move along, I'd say, hey, sit your ass down and pay attention. It's this diversity of ideas and concepts that sets DC apart from Marvel. So it's Marvel's consistency versus DC's variety. Now that that's all taken care of, let's take a look at the highlights, the controversies, and whatever Captain Marvel was. This is Marvel vs. DC. Oh yeah, no theme song. 